welcome to Healthy Living. I am here today with Kelly Presnell, Marketing Director, PR Director for Hilton Head Hospital. It's great to see you. Great to be here. We have an interesting show today. Dr. John Batson is going to be talking with us. I'd love to know yeah. a little bit more about yeah. um, the theme. Right. Um, we ha have a new spine center here at the hospital. This is almost mm -hmm. about a year that we've we've been open and so we're trying to hit on all of the aspects of spine care so not necessarily just spine surgery but some of the other physicians that specialize in in back and neck and arm and leg pain and you know he brings a different perspective being uh, board certified and fellowship trained in sports yes. medicine um, so he sees a lot of the younger athletes um, in our community as well as you know the older um, generation that's active playing golf and tennis so he's going to give us some pointers on on sports injuries and back pain I'm excited to talk with him he also brought some great props so we can kind of see what we're talking about he did, be which, great. Is, which is fun always adds a little bit of um, a different element to the show and, and gives a nice visual so stay with us we're going to talk with Dr. John Batson here on Healthy Living We went to the emergency room and thank heavens we did. They discovered that I had two totally blocked arteries and I ended up having double bypass open heart surgery. Well, I stayed in the hospital for just a few nights. To the staff at Hilton Head Hospital, I would express the deepest gratitude that I possess. They literally, quite literally, saved my wife's life. Welcome to Healthy Living. We are here today with Dr. John Batson, and we're talking about sports medicine. We're talking about the spine. We're talking about pain management. And I, you know, the older I get, the more I can identify with all of those things. And I think anyone who does any kind of athletics also can um, identify a little bit more with uh, pain. And okay. uh, yeah, I mean, it's amazing. It really is. Right. Tell us a little bit, if you will, about your background. I know you're from here. I actually grew up on Hilton Head mm -hmm. and graduated from Hilton Head High School and uh, did med school in Columbia and did residency in Greenville and have completed two fellowships, one in sports medicine and one in pain medicine. Mm -hmm. And my board certifications are in sports medicine and pain medicine, so kind of a unique integration for especially active folks with back or neck pain or really any joint complaints. And we try non-operative approaches to treating their pain or problems that they're having. One of the things that we were talking about when we were kind of preliminarily chatting about the way that the show is going to go is the continuum of care here at the hospital that you work very well with your orthopedic surgeons. Sure. Most of the interventions that you do are specifically uh, non-interventional. Yes, they. I guess we would consider it interventional procedures but not surgery. Okay, that's a better way. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, first line for most folks is going to be the basic treatments of resting and icing the area and doing your um, Motrin medicines, things like that. Um, but if that fails or if the pain is so great when they have that problem, they may come in and we might talk about a procedure that would help calm down the pain. And it's not like they, an epidural kind exactly, of thing? Exactly, things like that. Um, for example, you might have a patient who has a herniated disc and their pain is too great for them to really even participate in physical therapy or do some exercises. We might find where that disc is, uh, giving them the trouble, perform an epidural. We put a little cortisone next to that spot to get okay. the pain calmed down and then get them back to physical therapy to really work on more of a preventative care so it doesn't come up again. Really, um, pain and spinal issues or neck and back things happen at any age. What are some of the typical things that you see in younger folks and then versus some of the things that are typical in older? And I ask that specifically because I have an 83-year-old dad who still was a runner and still is a walker and all that, but right. has stenosis, and he said epidurals have saved his life. Well, it is a, I, I see really three different patterns of um, problems in mm -hmm. different age groups. The younger athlete, uh, high school football player, for example, uh, I've seen two of these in the last month, uh, stress fractures in the back from uh, specific injuries to a, an area in the back that's subject to stress. And For example? 
Um, there's I a, love this. This yes, is so great. You brought, you have you brought our, props. Our spine yes. here. Uh -huh. So there's a particular area in the spine that um, is very subject to stress back here, especially when football players arch back or any athlete really twisting and rotating. Mm -hmm. So in a young age age group, we can see stress fractures here. Wow. So number one cause of back pain in an adolescent is going to be a stress fracture. So that's what we're ruling out any time I see them. And just to kind of orient me or orient our viewers, too, to where I am here. Right. A good rule of thumb is this level here is usually at about the belt line. Okay. And that's in the low back area here. Okay. Um, we rarely see problems in the mid back. That's where all your ribs are. That tends to hold the, the spine pretty uh, steady, and we rarely see problems here just because there's less stress here. Mm -hmm. And then you have your neck up here. So most problems occur where the most motion occurs, and in the neck it's the lower segments here or the lower segments here. Okay. So the young athlete, oftentimes subject to stress down here, and the stress fracture is what we commonly see. The middle-aged uh, athlete, uh, if we want to right. use the athlete analogy there. Um, oh, yeah, because we're talking a lot about sports right. medicine, too. Uh -huh. uh, their problem is going to be more with a disc, typically. And the, the two things that we oh. see happen with a disc, you can have a tear in the disc, and it can hurt just like a tear in a meniscus mm -hmm. in the knee. Or you can actually have a herniated disc, which is what the model's showing, and it can hit the, the nerve. So what and is then, a herniated? It, it bulges? Right. The discs are like um, shock absorbers between the bones and they actually look a lot like a jelly-filled donut. And the outer rim is a tough outer rim. The inner nucleus is a squishy part that gives okay. it elasticity. If the outer rim gets weak, it can herniate out, and they tend to herniate into the back. If they hit the nerve, then you get the classic sciatica symptoms. And causes of all of this? Well, it, it sometimes... Varied. Yes, exactly. Sometimes people just have a poor disc. I actually saw a 15-year-old mm -hmm. recently with a herniated disc. Wow. We tend to think you know, with no injury, that's probably someone who just has kind of the genes with poor makeup in the disc mm -hmm. uh, structure. Um, but oftentimes it's something lifting, twisting, sneezing, coughing, something like that. There probably was a, an injury and then just something pushed it over the edge. You know, I do a lot of yoga and I absolutely love it. And I think I just didn't realize, you know, special back exercises and things right. like that. Are there ways, I didn't realize there were real ways that you could strengthen. Sure. Yeah. parts of your, your back We're all body. getting a little bit more savvy with what exercises we're doing for specific problems. Um, the core muscles, everyone tended to think in the past you do some sit-ups and your core is going to be strong. And okay. we're kind of finding now that that's a component of it, but there are also a lot of back muscles that stabilize the spine. And then also the integration of the hip muscles has been really important for stabilization of the spine, and in particular in women or folks who are loose jointed where the, the hips may not be functioning quite like they should, they're looser. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of tightening all of that up. Um, and really any muscle that spans the joints of the back and the, and the hip are included in that core muscle group. Do people come to you because typically they're experiencing a, a, a certain pain or an ache or whatever as opposed to just saying, can you give me a can you give me a screening and tell me if I'm vulnerable in a different area? I, I yeah, know that sounds I, like a silly question. I think as a, the with our current healthcare system not really necessarily emphasizing prevention as much. Right now, unfortunately, we're treating when there's a problem, and uh, we may see something and say, "Wow, you've got this particular issue." Right. You know, if I see someone and we're dealing a good example today, I had someone who came in with shoulder pain, but just noticed their posture wasn't great in the mid back and the neck. And so part of that treatment, I just said, we know we better work on some posture in the mid-back and, and exercises for your neck because you look a little stiff there. Mm -hmm. So we try to integrate some of that. It's a little harder to really uh, yeah. get them enthusiastic about oh, prevention yeah. when they really want to get better from one specific problem. That but it's having. probably all correlated. I mean, A lot of times it is. Yeah, a lot of times it is. And, and then going back to our, you know, we had our young athlete yes, with a exactly. stress fracture. Now we have the second group. The second group, middle-aged individual with the disc problem. Mm -hmm. Your father, for example, probably dealing more with what we would call a degenerative spine mm -hmm. where there are multiple problems. There are joints in the spine that can have arthritis. At that point, a lot of times we see squish disc, we okay. call them degenerative disc. And then we see stenosis where nerves are pinched. So stenosis is where there's crowding around the nerves and you get a lot of pain because of that. So that's kind of a, a, a very common complaint for the 55 and up crowd. Okay, so let's say that I've, I've run or I've walked throughout my life and I'm 58 years old. And do you find that people who have worked out are more susceptible to injury? It's a good question, and uh, we really don't know that yet. A lot of folks have, 
you know, if I see someone who's been more of a couch potato, I don't necessarily see that they have more problems with their back, more disc herniations or anything like that. What I do find, though, is the folks who have been more active tend to respond better to the interventional treatments, the therapy, um, the exercises, mm -hmm. the home programs. They tend to get better quicker with less, you know, problems versus someone who's really never done any exercise at all and you try to start start that process when they have a problem, some, they don't tend to do as well. What's tip, what would be a typical patient scenario? I would come in with a knee pain. You would diagnose, give me protocol. Do I continue to come with you? What do you Right, is, right. It's, um, what does that look like? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's coming in. First, you've got to figure out what's going on. Is okay. it uh, hip pain that's referred to the knee, or is it truly a, a knee problem? It okay. can even be a back problem. L3 and L4 nerves mm -hmm. can actually radiate to the knee. So a lot of it's, first of all, finding the right diagnosis. We do that by our exam, mm -hmm. by x-rays, potentially. MRI, and then really deciding on the treatment plan for that particular problem, um, and then we may do periodic follow-ups depending on, you know, was it a problem that's a chronic issue or was it just an acute injury that now we're getting over and you go back to your normal uh, activities. And, you know, we've been spending a lot of time this segment talking about specific things that can happen. I also would like to talk a little bit about interventions in pain, because sure. pain can be pretty insidious and, and, you know, you can have a pain in your knee and... Right. I, I, you sort of become so accustomed to it that I don't, it's not that it's not real, I just think that's just, I'm so used right. to it. Many people will tolerate the aches and pains that you have just in various spots pretty well, but when something goes over the edge and gets a little bit more acute, sharp pain, that mm -hmm. type of thing, that's what usually will bring them in. I got to get this fixed because I can't exercise anymore. I can't do what right. I want to do uh, for the, you know, dads or moms. They can't lift their children, chase their children, that exactly. type of thing. Uh, the younger athlete can't participate in their sport. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, there's something that usually tips you over the edge and you, you end up coming in for that, that problem. Before we take a quick break, are, are most folks referred to you or are you the first line of defense? It's kind of a nice mix. I see some patients, I've been in the area long enough to yeah. just have some self-referrals um, from patients or, um, you know, folks who've seen yeah. my ad in the paper, that type of thing. But, Friends. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so it's nice because in that case, I am the frontline doctor seeing them for the first time, and it's in some ways good to see a specialist because we know exactly what yes. you, should, you should do. You're not going to be spinning your wheels, doing things that aren't necessarily helpful. We know what x-rays to get. We know what you know treatment is going to be best. Um, so that's kind of nice to see someone frontline like that. On the other hand, we do get a lot of referrals from primary care doctors who've tried appropriate first measures okay. and they have not worked for that patient, so they're going to the next step. On the flip side, some folks have actually even seen surgeons before, and so the surgeon will say, you know, you're, you're not, not ready for, not that ready yet. for surgery, yeah. or, you know, this, this surgery that we could do, you know, you should try these other things first. Um, Makes so have, much sense. Yeah, and we also sometimes see folks who've had an, a, a surgery that helped for a little while, and now mm -hmm. they're having a new problem above or below that particular surgery, or just a different issue that, you know, now it's something else we want to treat differently. Very interesting. Stay with us. We're going to be right back. We're going to be talking to Dr. John Batson. We're talking about sports injuries, pain, the spine. Right. Stay with us. We were outside after dinner, Mary Grace was riding her bike and heard a scream that no mother wants to hear. We took her immediately to Coastal Carolina. We could not believe it was a broken jaw. They are gifted to do what they do. And they are there for the community. And as a member of the community, I will be forever grateful. Hilton Head Regional Medical Center is located at 25 Hospital Center Boulevard. When traveling east on William Hilton Parkway, make a left-hand turn on Beach City Road, and the next left, Hospital Center Boulevard, will be located just past the Hilton Head Library. 
Coastal Carolina Hospital is located on US 278 at Exit 8 on I-95. Telephone is 843-784-8000 on the web www.coastalhospital.com. We went to the emergency room and thank heavens we did. They discovered that I had two totally blocked arteries and I ended up having double bypass open heart surgery. Well, I stayed in the hospital for just a few nights. To the staff at Hilton Head Hospital, I would express the deepest gratitude that I possess. They literally, quite literally, saved my wife's life. We are back here on Healthy Living. We're talking today with Dr. John Batson, and we're talking about spines and stretching and pain and all kinds of things. It's really interesting, and I think that um, there's so much to talk about. Yeah. It's, it's hard to really focus in on one or two things. Um, during the break, though, you said it would be interesting to chat a little bit about some of the interventions that you have, some of the procedures that right. you do, how they work and what they are. Right. Lower back. Okay, so low back procedures that we do for folks who are having pain. First off, find the diagnosis, what's giving you the trouble. Uh, we talked a little bit about before. And lower back, again, just to review, is... Right. There are five low back bones, uh, L5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Most of the problems occur in the lower uh, segments down here where a lot of the motion occurs and a lot of the stress occurs. When I get low back pain, am I getting pain, muscular pain, joint pain, skeletal pain, or am I getting sciatic pain. That's part of the challenge to, oh. to figure that out. That's and, why we uh, have you. That's right, uh -huh. that's okay. right. So if you did have sciatic pain, for example, then typically we would think that the nerve is irritated and the, the procedures that we do for nerve irritation are epidurals. So we're actually able to use a, an x-ray machine called a C-arm to guide a needle to the correct spot where that nerve is getting pinched. And we put a little cortisone and numbing medicine right where that problem is. The biggest change in our field recently in the last you know, 10 years has been using the x-ray machine to very accurately place medicine so that it's safe and you're, you're hopefully reducing the number of times that you need to do procedures because you're getting it right where it needs to be. So let's say you hit it, you're dead on. What does that epidural do? Well, one thing is there's a lot of inflammatory mediators that are at the cellular level even that are causing some of the pain. So flushing that area out with just numbing medicine can actually help the problem. Ah. So some patients walk in in bad pain, they literally are leaving and say, man, I wow. feel great. Right. Um, the next thing is we are putting some cortisone medicine in that area, which is a very potent anti-inflammatory. So if there's swelling associated with the disc or with the nerve, that will help with that. Does it just allow it to heal then? Exactly. Part of my role is really to reduce the pain, give your body a chance to catch up with some healing. Just like if you break a bone or you skin your leg, your body doesn't like irritation in any spot, mm -hmm. and it actively tries to heal that. So some of my role is just to make it comfortable during that process. Let me ask you a question. If I have that epidural there, can I go out, and I feel better, yeah. can I go walk those two miles again? Well, we, we don't necessarily do the Andre Agassi approach where you get the shot and you right, go right and then out, out and the play. next day, okay. But uh, typically we would want you to rest for a little while after you have a procedure like that just because we do want the medicine to stay in that area mm -hmm. and be as active as it can be. Um, on the other hand, if we saw you and you did not have leg pain suggesting a nerve irrit was irritated, you had a pattern that fit more like arthritis, there are tiny joints in the spine called facet joints, mm -hmm. and they're about the size of a knuckle joint, but we have with, with this x-ray machine the ability to actually direct treatment right to those joints. Mm -hmm. So it's a very tiny joint, but we can put medicine in that joint or around the joint to block the pain from that joint. Does it help you for me to be able to identify what my pain looks and feels like? In other words, if it's an ache or a radiating or right. electrical, I, I don't know. We, Are we there... listen for all those little clues and part of the interview process is actually trying to figure out does it sound like a nerve problem, does it sound like arthritis, does it sound like a disc problem, you know, what, what would be my clue in that, okay, we're going to go after that particular issue because we have to listen to that, then look at your pictures and then say, okay, what from those pictures would be causing that pain? and then treat it okay. appropriately. Well, so, that's probably part of the fun of what you do, it is. too. It really I mean, is, because, you know, you, you, there are a lot of challenges out mm -hmm. there. When someone comes in and they just point at my yeah, back my hurts, back hurts right there, right. There, you know, I've talked about five or six different okay. things that can really be causing pain. So, especially when you get an MRI that shows problems at multiple spots, 
we really have to you know, be as, as focused with what we want to mm -hmm. do because just giving you a shot, it may not do the trick if we miss the spot. Well, and it seems to me, again, psychologically speaking, that pain can be pretty debilitating as far as depressions right. and things like that. I mean, Well, that's the, a big thing that we've learned in recent years also is just how uh, much of an impact pain has on many aspects of your life, your relationship, your work, uh, your activity level, things well, like that. if you don't that. feel good. Right. Yeah. So one thing that we're learning is a lot of the medicines like the antidepressants actually help with chronic pain. Um, so some of those might be in the treatment uh, program as well. Mm -hmm. um, some as part of a typical evidence-based protocol. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The um, basic treatments that I discussed, if, if, say, the arthritis injection helped, but that didn't help long-term, we actually have a procedure where we use radio waves to treat chronic pain. So we'll actually put a little probe where a nerve How sits. How interesting. The probe generates a radio frequency current, heats up that nerve, and knocks the nerve out, so to speak. It stuns the nerve so that your pain is reduced for a longer period of time. That's kind of a newer treatment wow. that, that we offer. Um, Typically, how long would that be with that intervention? Usually, if we're on the right nerve okay. and we're getting the right spot, then the results are 6 to 18 months of improvement with that. So much better than the typical just you know numbing shot with cortisone. Wow. Um, other things that we do that are even more advanced for folks who, say, have had surgery that you know now they may have some scar tissue mm -hmm. in the back, we actually can put a pacemaker in their back and put little wires on top of the nerves, um, analogous to when you, if you hit your thumb with a hammer okay. and you rub your hand right. above it, this is distracting you from the pain okay. you just uh, sustained. So it's kind of like that. It generates a little electrical current to hide your pain. So kind of neat things that have come up recently that are treating pain more effectively. Would you talk, we talk, we were talking before to our cameraman, and he was talking about his son and knees and things like that. Do you right. see a lot of knee, hip? Absolutely. Ankle yes. kind of things, too, because right. I know we're talking specifically spine right now. Right. No, we do a lot of care for other joints as well, and um, again, non-operative care. So I'm focusing on looking at the patient. You know, do they need to get into orthotics, different shoe wear? Do they need to uh, work on muscle imbalances, mm -hmm. uh, like we talked about? There may be a muscle group that could be strengthened to help that particular problem out. Or are they too tight, as we see with many young individuals? Mm -hmm. uh, they can have tight hamstrings. We need to uh, get them limber and, and loosened up, so to speak. Well, I was just going to say, we were also talking a little bit about stretching. Can you teach us um, some techniques of prevention? Because sure. I know prevention is sort of the, the key word these days. Right, right. Well, I think the, the biggest thing that folks can do, and I've, I've tried really hard on the show to uh, mm -hmm. use good posture. You know, that's, that's yeah, an well, important. Yeah, I said you have good posture, yeah. <laughs> it's an important aspect of this, and I uh -huh. think more and more with the crowds on the, you know, the social media, the computers, mm -hmm. um, as schools go to more computer-oriented uh, teaching, I'm um, seeing a lot of folks that the whole day they're like this. Mm -hmm. And so more and more True. where we used to not see problems in the mid-back, we're starting to see problems there. So I think, you know, having your shoulders back, having your head up high, mm -hmm. having, you know, the ergonomics of your workstation or your, your child's uh, uh, homework area mm -hmm. kind of situated so that their, their arms are relaxed, the computer screen's at the eye level. Um, you know, being posture police, so to speak, is okay, mm -hmm. uh, especially for the younger crowd. Um, the, the lower back, the hip area, oftentimes what I see are people stop using flexibility into their workouts. If you're on a team in you know, high school, they always, or they try to uh, get you stretching through yes. the, the practice. But as we start exercising later in life, sometimes we just go in, we do what we want to do, and we don't necessarily keep up with the flexibility. Well, I know that um, doing a, I was doing a, I do do a lot of cardio, mm -hmm. and I think it's made me less flexible. Is that, po I mean, is that... Sometimes it depends what you do. If you're running a lot or you're doing an elliptical, for example, um, that's, you know, every time you do that motion, you're, you're using your hamstrings and it's just tightening the hamstrings. So exercise in general will loosen a joint up just because you're using the joint. But if you do a certain motion over and over again, it can lead to tightening in that muscle group. So if you are into those particular activities, stretching is going to be really important. Mm -hmm. I come back to the hamstring, the hip flexors. Those are muscles that span from the back all the way down to the knee. Uh, and the lower leg, so they're spanning two joints, and any muscle that spans two joints tends to give us problems if it gets tight. Is so, there a way that, do, do injuries begin with the muscle and move on, or? Well, I think sometimes you can just have a muscle strain. So um, sometimes you can get, you know, kind of a kink in your neck or your back, so to speak, mm -hmm. or you can be running and you kind of pull your muscles, mm -hmm. uh, and you have an acute muscle injury. Um, more often than not, when I see patients, there's a, a problem underlying that. 
-hmm. The analogy my teacher used to use is if there's water on the floor and you keep cleaning up the puddle, but no one ever addresses the hole oh. in the roof, you keep having to clean up the puddle. So if someone comes in and they said, I've had this muscle strain here, I've had massages, 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 mm -hmm. I've had therapy, did anyone ever look at the neck? Is there a pinched nerve there that's giving you that pain in that spot? So you can have a muscle strain that's a, you know, just a primary problem, but sometimes it can also be a deeper problem that the muscle is in spasm because it's trying mm -hmm. to protect mm -hmm. that area. So that's a secondary complaint. Are we good patients when it comes to things that we need to do for those patients? How, how, uh, how think, motivated yeah. we are, right? So pain is a good motivator. You know, if you're really hurting, uh, a lot of times you'll do whatever we ask mm -hmm. you to do. You know, we haven't I mean, even talked about the neck or anything like right. that, and we're, we are out of time. It's, it's fascinating. I think there's not one of us that can't relate to it. Right. And just knowing that there are some interventions that can really hurt is uh, great information. Thank you very much again, oh, Dr. John Batson, for joining us here on Healthy Living. Thank you all for joining us here on Healthy Living. Bye-bye.